So far, we saw three different paradigms for recommended items to users. The first one was session-based, a sequence of item IDs, and then you were predicting the next item. The second one was uh, autoencoder type of model for recommender systems, but your data was in the form of a matrix, the interaction of a user with a particular item. Then we saw another way of thinking about recommender systems, which was, I have a query. My query is the features of the users and some contextual information. And then the things that we were looking for, the keys, were features of the items. And we were basically doing a search problem, reformulating recommendation system as searching for something, retrieval. This is neural collaborative filtering. The methodology is different, but your data is going to be in the form of a matrix of interactions, user item interaction. You're going to be doing collaborative filtering, and then you're going to generalize it to neural networks and make it deep. What do we have? We have M users, you have M items, you have a matrix of user item interactions. That matrix is going to be very sparse. So if a user interacted with an item, we put a one in that entry, otherwise it's zero. And if a user interacts with an item, perhaps clicks on it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that particular user liked it. So it's implicit data. Unlike explicit, where you know the rating that the user associated to that particular item. If it's zero, it doesn't necessarily mean that the user didn't like that item. They just didn't get the chance to interact with that item. What do you want to do? Your task is fill in the missing entries in that matrix. Perhaps make some of these zeros and fill that with information and make it non-zero. If, if you manage to make that non-zero, it means that you need to recommend that item to the user. What would you do? You have an integer for your user. This is user ID. You have an integer for the item ID. You want to write a neural network or a function, which is going to predict these y hats, which are supposed to approximate your y, and this is predicted score. You can have two different types of losses. One is point by this loss, which you can simply subtract your prediction from the ground truth, square it, and then sum that across your data, or it could be pairwise, and you want to make y hat more likely than any other wrong answer. And we're going to see that shortly. Matrix factorization, I promise that I'm going to give you that algorithm. It is collaborative filtering. It belongs to the category of collaborative filtering methods without the neural part. So it's not using deep neural networks. So it's a classical machine learning framework. What would you do? You would associate to each user a vector. And this should remind you of word vectors. Whenever you have an integer, you can associate a vector to it. And this is the vector representation for user, vector representation for your item. And all you're doing is modeling this function by multiplying these two vectors together. This is the inner product of the two. This is going to give you a scalar. K is the parameter that you choose. And then you're going to compare y hat to y. That's matrix factorization. For neural collaborative filtering, let's say you have a one-hot encoding for your user. You have a one-hot encoding for your item. If you multiply a one-hot code by a matrix, it's going to pick either a column or a row. So it doesn't really matter whether you're multiplying from right to left. So it's basically the same as P, U, and Q, I. All you're doing is changing the F function. And I'm going to tell you how you can model F. But for now, let's look at our loss function. You can subtract the two, square it, and put a weight here. This turns out to be important here because this is an unbalanced type of data. You have a lot of zeros compared to ones. So to the data that has a one, you're going to associate a higher weight and a lower weight to the zeros because you have a lot of them. You don't want your model to be biased towards zeros. Otherwise, your y hat is going to end up being the zero function, which you don't really like. This is the set of observed interactions. This is the set of negative instances. Wherever you have zeros, it means 
it is unobserved interactions or it's a subset of that. We can do subsampling as well. Rather than waiting, we can do subsampling. Okay? Another approach in terms of your loss was this pairwise loss is different from pointwise. You write down the likelihood. Now you're interpreting y hat as the likelihoods and you want to make the ones more likely and the zeros also more likely it is one minus the likelihood of the ones. We are trying to do the correct thing with your data. And you can interpret y hat as the likelihood that i is relevant to user u. If you take a log, these products are going to end up being summations. And this loss function should be familiar to you. You're doing uh, logistic regression, basically. Okay. Now let's go back to this f function and how you want to actually model it. You can have the vector corresponding to your user. You can have the vector corresponding to your item. You can multiply the two pointwise. After this operation, you still have a vector of the same size as P, U, and Q, I. If H is ones, all you are doing is computing the, I, the inner product, but you can have more flexibility here. You can set H to be a learnable parameter and A out to be a function. If A out is identity, H is a bunch of ones, you're back to matrix factorization. On the other side of the spectrum, you can do multi-layer perceptrons. What would you do? You concatenate the user and uh, the item. That's going to give you Z1. And as soon as you have the first input to your neural network, you can put a neural network on top of it and then do your prediction. So you have two choices for your F function. You can combine the two. If you fuse them, that's going to give you neural matrix factorization. You have some features out of computing the dot product between your user. This is not the dot product, it's the Hadamard product, element-wise product. That's going to give you some features from generalized matrix factorization. You're going to have some MLP features, concatenate the two, multiply by a vector to turn that into a scalar, push that through your sigmoid, and that's going to give you your predictions that you can use and train your model using either likelihood or mean squared error. In terms of evaluation, this is similar to recall. You look at the ground truth item that your user liked. If it is showing up among the L items that your model is recommending, you count that as a positive point for your model, otherwise it's zero. You can have the AUC, as I promised, that I was gonna explain that. You want the ground truth for this particular user to, be, uh, to have a lower rank compared to the items that you are not recommending to the user. So this is your item. SU is the candidate items that you're recommending to the user. And I minus SU is all of the items that you didn't recommend. And you can look at movie lens and Pinterest data, and this is doing the best on all of them. I think I'm gonna stop here. For those of who have questions, I'll be out.